because y'all have been good help today. Where is the mage? He is nowhere to be found. Said? Duker? Da big? Oh, there he is. There's my little muncher. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by under the barn. Who it is a little blustery evening it is. We have backed up like an old horse to the barn to keep the wind from running up our backbone. And I hear you saying, Kent, it's just bacon. Frying bacon, you can't be messing bacon up. Oh, you can mess it up, you can, mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna show you the tips and the tricks. Three different ways you can sort of cook it to give you the best happy hog experience you ever had in your life. So let's break out the hog meat. And some of y'all might not be knowing it now, but we have two videos out a week every Sunday now at 4 p.m. Central and every Wednesday at 2.30. And you don't wanna miss neither one of them yet cause you'd miss out on some of these great ideals that we have. But bacon is the star of the show. But I think before we get to there, I better tell you a bacon experience that I had in LA so many years ago when I was cooking for the Home and Family Channel. They called and they asked, what type of protein would you like to cook with? Now folks, that done throwed me for a loop. I didn't even know what protein was of the kind, except you get from feeding cows, protein. She said, I'm talking meat. I said, ma'am, I'm gonna use bacon. She said, what kind of bacon would you like? What, what do you mean, just bacon, ma'am? She said, you want turkey bacon, chicken bacon? I said, ma'am, bacon don't come from but none place that I know of, and that off the belly of a hog. I'm talking good, thick, cut bacon. Duke says, I know it, I see it. But don't be going to the store and buying that stuff that says thin cut bacon. You know what they use that for? They use it at the doctor's office for eye exams because it will be right out here and you can see through it and read the chart a half a mile away. Get thick cut bacon. That's what you need. And then what do we do? Get a, a great vessel to cook it with. What is that? Cast iron because it holds heat, transfers heat pretty evenly, and it is the best thing that you can cook bacon with. Now, when you get started with this, we just have the stargazer broke out here, and it is cold. Well, I won't say cold, cold. It's probably about room temperature, just like the bacon is when I brought it in from the store. Now, I don't need you to put him over the fire just yet. No, I need you just to go ahead and get you some of that bacon out. We're gonna place him right in that skillet, right down the middle, and one thing you can't do, don't overcrowd. But when you get them in there and first start out, make sure that it's not overlapping, make sure nobody's touching, and make sure that your pan is cool in here. We're gonna start out with a medium heat. Another tip, get you some tongs so we can gently flip this bacon. Over medium heat we go. Cool skillet, cool bacon. Now this is not gonna just happen like, ooh, it's in the microwave, it's done in a hurry. No, we're gonna probably go till the skillet gets warmed up and then I'd say three to four minutes aside after that, depending on how you like your bacon. Shan likes her bacon cooked by me, sorta of crispy on the plate with two eggs. Me, not quite as crispy as hers. But what we're trying to do too here is if you cook this slower, you're gonna let that fat render out just a little bit more and you're not gonna get so many humps and waves in that piece of bacon and that's what we're after. Now some of you down out there be telling me right now, they make a bacon press. Yes, they do. And I just happen to have one, I do. But you see this, if you put it down here on this end, it ain't covering the other end. I like to use another cast iron skillet that you can just lay flat down in there but you try that first before you ever start to make sure that it hits the surface of that bacon that you're cooking there. Hey, you can see this is cooking right along. Don't be afraid to flip it because it, when we flip it, we're gonna even that bacon out, but also don't be afraid to change sides. Everybody likes to switch positions every once in a while. Right. You can see how the edges of this are beginning to brown. So when you go ahead and flip that rascal, in fact, we're gonna trade places with all of them here in just a minute. On this gas stove, I am gonna to have to turn the heat down just a tad if I can figure out which way that is. Well, you can see in that skillet that the edges are golden brown, the middle is cooking about right. And why is that you say that we have got the perfect cooking going on here? Because we started out with that 
cool skillet, cool bacon. It gives that fat and everything time to render out. Now, I like my bacon just like that. I'm going to cook a piece that Shan likes no, here. I like it like that. Oh, do you? Yep. Oh, okay. So here's one I know Shan would grab first, a little crispier than that one there. Okay. And then you say, well, we got a problem here, Kent. We got all that bacon grease. Folks, look at that goodness right there. Do not burn that stuff, huh? Go ahead and take that off. Get it off the heat. Let it cool just for a minute. Get you a glass jar. You can use a coffee filter, 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 a coffee filter or a strainer. Pour that through there to sift out that. Let it sit over and cool off. Place it in a snap tight lid. Put it in the ice box. Everything you cook from now on will be better. Even if you put it in your hair, you will be the talk of the town. Now, I forgot to tell you right there at the first, but hey, if you got that cast iron skillet, it needs to be well seasoned because bacon too will stick in a pan if it's not seasoned. So make sure you're starting out with a good piece of cast iron that is really good and seasoned. And if you have trouble with that or don't know what we're talking about, check out our cast iron playlist. It'll be sure and help you out. Now that bacon grease and everything that's in there, like I was showing you a while ago, I would just take one of them mesquite wood spatulas that we have and just rake all that stuff over there to one side wood against metal you're not going to hurt your seasoning now we made these mesquite spatulas just for that purpose but it'll knock that stuff loose so easy but do it folks when you get through cooking that is the best time don't wait 15 minutes don't wait 10 minutes as soon as you let that bacon over in that plate cooling off go ahead and scrape that skillet and you'll be good to go so i have one more method because i'm going to skip the microwave method so what are we talking about baking bacon in the oven. Now preheat that oven to 400 degrees. Take your little old bacon sheet that you got in there, that's B-A-K-I-N-G, not B-A-C-O-N, and line it with parchment paper. Yep. Now I like to put two pieces on there because we're gonna catch that grass, not grass, the grease off that bacon. And if you don't and you just leave it sitting in there, there's sometimes some splattering and then you hear that sound, what? the smoke alarm has went off and all the neighbors will be knowing that you have baked bacon. We're not putting it on a wire rack. We're just laying directly on there. Now we're gonna bake this in the oven probably 17 to 20 minutes, depending on how you like your bacon. Do you be liking it really, really crispy or be you liking it like this? You just keep an eye on it. That's why you know when you're gonna pull it. When you bring it out of there, automatically right then transfer it, what? Not to a wire rack, but to a paper towel on a plate to where it can lay flat and it can drain. Well, as always, we thank y'all for stopping by camp, whether it be at camp or under the barn or in the house. We appreciate it. We really do for y'all watching. As always, I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the folks that's been keeping us free and safe and all the product getting shipped to us and all the doctors and everybody out there. I mean, hey, we appreciate each and every one of you. We do. For the rest of you, get on in here. Hold up. We can't get in on here yet. You haven't had a bite. I haven't had a bite. The puppies say they need another bite. Ain't Oh, Sage says that is some good bacon right there. There's a duker. There is the big. And there is the major. Ooh. We finna do that to our bacon dance where you just be laying up in there, letting that grease roll around all over you, getting hot, and then you just sizzle, you pop. Then somebody be what? Flipping you. Next thing you know, you're out of the pan, you got done baking and everything is good. So like I say, we appreciate you watching, we do. God bless you each and every one. Get on down here and I'm gonna walk you through how to make the best bacon in the world trail. <laughs> hey, all you hog meat lovers, I know you be loving some bacon. Mm -hmm. And we got two other videos out there that you might wanna check out. Our jalapeno candied bacon, but also how to make homemade, home-cured bacon. Be sure and check them out. You'll be wanting to. Mm, they're good.